Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio. I haven't done a video in a while because I've been kind of busy doing other things that need more of my attention. But I was working this morning while watching Netflix and thought I would come on real quick and show you what I'm in, what I'm doing. I am in the, in the middle. Oh, sorry, the dog's at the door and she wants in, but she's not coming in. I am the, in the middle of a beating frenzy. I'm trying, and this is going to be a little tricky, turn this sideways, but there you go. This is board number two. You can see that through there. Um, I am trying to make a lot of beads right now for a project that I'm working on that's going to take a ton of beads. So I'm trying to make some new ones in colors that I really want that I don't have otherwise and add them to some that I've already got made to whittle down my, my um, inventory. I think I've talked in the past about what my procedure is to do the beads, so I'm going to go through this again. I have paper bowls that I made watching Shannon do the rolled paper stuff, so I made paper bowls. This one is of a 20 by 24 map of North America, and I wrote in, I put in there North America so that I could remember this is a bowl from North America, but I take these bowls. And when I do the beads, I put the beads I just rolled all into the bowl, and they wait until they go into the next bowl, which is the bowl where they are each individually put on a toothpick, like this. So there's my bowl with waiting to be sealed beads. This one has waiting to be sealed beads that are being sealed right now on the number one board. And then I have yet another box here of uh, waiting to be sealed. And these are already sealed. These are the ones I pulled off this morning that I let sit overnight. So these are yellow cardstock and then the printed ones are scrapbook paper. I like using the cardstock to make these basic uh, bicone beads or the round beads because it's more sturdy and the paper is just a little bit thicker than scrapbook paper and I like the way they feel. They feel really nice. Of course scrapbook paper ones are fine or you can use magazine but I wanted to use up some of my cardstock that I have a feeling I'm never going to use otherwise in this project. It's stuff I've already got. It's not costing me anything to do this. I rolled all my beads on my little bead rollers and I cut beads in strips. These right here in this bowl, this is a half inch strip and where is it? I think this one is a three quarter, three quarter strip. Do I have any one inchers, one inchers in here? I think, I don't think there's any really long ones in here. Oh wait, here's one. There we go. So we have half inch quarter, uh, three quarter inch and one inch beads. And I don't really care what size they are as long as they take up space. I'm using scrapbook paper that came in an eight and a half by 11 pad. And I've been cutting it up because I'd like to get rid of it. And it doesn't matter how ugly your scrapbook paper is because honestly, you really can't see that much of what the design is. So who cares? You're just gonna get a little snippet of color and that's all I truly wanted. These are stripes and it doesn't matter that I didn't, oh, well, come on, focus. It didn't matter that my stripes don't match because really, who cares? Um, I'm not wearing it as jewelry, so. So anyway, so my big project that people have been asking about on Facebook is that I'm going to make bead curtains. Um, I'm gonna do it for three windows and I'm going to need a lot of beads. So that's why I'm in the beaded frenzy that I'm in right now is because I'm trying to get enough beads that I can string them. I have an idea of how to hang them. I've been looking on Pinterest for ideas on how to hang the the beads on the window. And so I'm I'm formulating a way to to string these guys. They will be strung on some kind of heavy poundage fishing uh fishing line. And I'll probably go buy that at Walmart and then start stringing them. I'm not sure if I'm going to put any kind of a 
um, let's see, what do you do, 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 do? Some kind of another glass bead in between these, or if I'm going to make these all paper bead curtains, I might have to do alternating things because they need to be weighted. Although I could put a heavy weight bead or a glass bead of some sort at the bottom of every string to weight them down. But I think that if I distribute the weight evenly all the way down the line, that probably might be better. And then put a little heavier one at the bottom. I'm going to put them on a rod, I think with curtain, curtain rod, shower curtain, metal rod things, clips, hooks, I don't know what you call them. And that way I can scoot them open and close at will. So anyway, that is what my big project is with all these beads that I'm doing right now. And basically what I've been doing after I had my coffee this morning is I've been sealing beads so that they are ready to go. I take my Mod Podge and I put each, actually I put each bead on the toothpick as you saw on the bowls. Then I take the paintbrush, just a little soft, cheap paintbrush, and I put Mod Pod, dip it in the Mod Pod, just clean out of the container, and then I roll the bead over the over the brush. That way I don't get it too thick for the first coat, although that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it does get drippy and it does cause your bead to stick to the toothpick, so you don't want to get overzealous. The, the cool thing is, is that when you do it like this, Sometimes you don't have to flip the bead over because it, when it dries, sometimes you pop this off and then you flip it over so that you get as much coverage on this side and then you as this side. So you need for them to be covered on both sides to give it longevity. So if I have the kind where I can flip it over, that way I don't have to take it off. There are some beads that the hole... For some reason, even though I use the same size roller for all of these, this series of beads, sometimes the hole or the, the bead will slip down onto the toothpick. So my idea is you put the bead up on the toothpick, higher up on the toothpick so you don't see it. Take another toothpick and stick it in the hole and kind of wiggle it in there. And it's, it's in there. So all I have to do, instead of chasing the bead up and down the toothpick, is double toothpick it and then put my sealer on it and it's good to go. So some of my beads are on, you know, they have two toothpicks in them. Some of them only have one toothpick, depending on the hole and how the paper behaves. Let's see, what are these guys? Are these double toothpicks? I'm looking to see if there's any there in here. It's hard to tell when they're all in here like this. Like these right here. Oh, is that a double? Yep. Yeah. These right here are the saucer beads. It's not a round, a nice plump round bead. It's kind of, a, it's, it's a saucer bead. So the hole here, see if I do this, look, it's sliding right down the toothpick, right? So what I do is I just push it up with my hands to where you don't see the toothpick through the top of the hole. Take this toothpick and wet, wedge it in there. And then when I go to seal it, I'll do the brush all the way around both ends and then when it gets into the number two board I will flip it and then do it on this edge then when I do the third coat I'll flip it one more time and do it all the way around on both sides to make sure it's sealed really well the only thing about doing this method is sometimes you lose beads because you cannot get the toothpicks out or the toothpick will break inside the beads. So be careful when you seal it that you don't glop so much on the top that you can't get the toothpicks out and you lose a bead or you break the toothpick off inside. I tried using pliers and I tried ramming stuff down the hole to get them out. Finally, I just chucked them in the trash to figure, oh, what the heck. You know, these are so cheap that it doesn't matter if I lose a couple. I probably lost 10 or 12 so far like that. Not a big deal. And toothpicks are so cheap, that doesn't really matter because I use them over and over until I can't put the bead on them anymore because it has so much of the Mod Podge on it, it stops the bead from really getting on the toothpick so well. And then I just get rid of them. In the past video, I showed, I think I did, I showed the Mod Podge that I use. It's the Mod Podge in the purple, in the uh, 
with the purple label on it. I it doesn't it doesn't really say what it is. I'm not sure. Hard coat. Yeah, hard coat. That's all it says. And it does have a slight shine to it, but frankly, I really I I'm okay with it because they're going to hang in a window and the sun's going to be through the window. And if it fades them, it's really no big deal. It's only paper. Yes, it is my time, but it's my time that I've enjoyed sitting and watching TV or chatting and then I cut cut paper and I roll the beads and I do everything in stages and it's fun. And when I get sick of rolling paper beads, I'll move on to be obsessed with the next project. And then these will be put away to languish in the drawer until it's time to put the curtain together. So I just thought I would come on real quick and tell you guys what it is I've been working on. I've been working on tons of paper beads for a curtain. Well, actually three curtains. Not really sure what colors I'm going to do. I don't know if I'm going to mix and match or I'm going to stick with a color thing. Our master bedroom quilt on the bed is like a buttery creamy yellow so I thought about doing a brighter yellow with some kind of a yellow and gray and then these guys whoops these guys are gray uh, gray are these scrapbook paper yeah these are gray scrapbook paper this is yellow cardstock so I thought I would alternate them and then put some kind of a printed bead from scrapbook paper that has both the yellow and the gray in it to make them kind of match um, the guest bedroom, I don't have a clue what I'm going to do for that because I think I'm changing the quilt in there. I have a trundle bed and I only bought a quilt for the top portion of it and I don't really like it. So I think I'm going to get rid of that at a yard sale and try to come up with another color that I really like and then do the beads according to what the quilt is that I end up with. The craft room will be harem scarum it'll be whatever's left over it'll be made out of ugly beads glittery beads it'll be made out of everything that i've managed to save that's miscellaneous let me go show you my miscellaneous jar okay whenever i have beads where i made a project and i had a bead one bead left over two beads left over and couldn't use them i would put them in this old-fashioned milk bottle and yes it still has the paper top to it isn't that cool it's paper anyway so i would put all these guys I would put all these guys in this jar and as you can see there's lots of different shapes be shape beads there's big fat ones there's the bicone beads there are long skinny ones this is basically the um, last place a bead ever goes at my house there's a saucer bead made out of white paper. I don't know why I did it that way, but I did. Then we just have the plain quilled ones, buttons that I couldn't use, and I threw them in the basket. I figured, what the heck, you know? So all of these guys, I think most of these guys have been sealed, and I might use these in the curtain. The lot, A lot of them are very tiny. I mean, there's some really little teeny weeny ones in here like this. That's that's a really small little bead and it'll be used in between two larger beads. It's just a very small button. Um, there's teardrops. There's ones that I painted stripes on. I mean, there's like a million different, a million different kinds of beads. I took this one. This one is made out of, I think a gum wrapper, the silver on the gum wrapper. And so it's a shiny silver bead. And I think I, did I seal this one? Oh no, this one's not been sealed. So there's that one from the gum wrapper. I think I've wrapped everything I can around the bead, the bead tool. Here's a um, book page. Oh, come on, focus, you silly thing. There's one from the, a book page. Anyway, so there's lots of stuff in here. I, um, I just love putting them in the jar and looking at them. And I like running my hands through them. For those of you who get irritated about hearing the sound, plug your ears because I'm fixing to do it. <laughs> I love feeling the beads. I like to feel how the ridges and how soft they are. And I love just putting them through my fingers. It's like sand at the beach. They just go through your fingers so nicely. And it just feels so cool. Here's a little tiny one. Look at that one. It's a cone bead that's very, very skinny. 
Anyway, so I might make the curtains for the craft room in this stuff to use up my leftovers. I'm going to make the other two rooms curtains first, then I'll do the craft room last. So that's that jar. Then I have this jar right here. Now this jar is a little weird, has weirder things in it. I want to pour this somewhere so it, oh well. All right, these are lucky stars that you can make a bead because you can poke a needle right through it. Saucer bead that didn't quite go well. The inside was too large. I mean, you can really see through the inside of this bead. Too large. So that one was a dud. And these guys, none of these have been sealed, so I have to seal these. See, there's another one. Too large. So I put them in the, in the jar. I have a lot of stars, and I have a lot of these yellow beads. I don't know why they're in there. They're just large, bi uh, large bicone beads. I don't know why they're in the jar. I think it's because I like the colors. And Anyway, so those are in a jar. And then I'm going to seal them, I guess, and put them on the, on the curtains and see how they look. I really like the idea of curtains. Now, I would love to do it on a door, but I have a dog named Penny, who's still a puppy, who eats everything mom. So she destroys my stuff. Of course, she doesn't destroy my husband's stuff. She destroys my stuff. So I've decided we're buying a baby gate to put up, and she's staying out of the craft room. She can look at me and whine through the baby gate, but she's not coming in the craft room because I don't want her to eat my paper bead curtains. <laughs> After all that work, I don't want her to eat my stuff. So I decided that's what I'm going to do, is I'm going to make a paper, a three paper bead curtains with all of my beads that I've been making for years and years. And um, so that's the big project. Okay, well, I will come back with another part to this as soon as I get enough to start stringing and can look at all my stuff. I'll set it out on the table here, and then I'll just go and string. It's not that exciting, but I will show you how I do it. I think the most exciting part will be figuring out how to attach it to the wall above the window and how long the strings are going to be and what I put in between the paper beads. I, like I said, I have a lot of other kind of um, bead, rock beads and all kinds of other beads that I think I'd like to use in between these. And I might have some kind of uh, jewelry stuff, you know, the little charms and things. Maybe I'll put those in between some of these. I just don't know yet. All I know is I've been looking at Pinterest and I really want to make these curtains because I think it's a pretty cool thing. It's very radical for me outside my comfort zone, so I thought I would give it a shot. All right, that's all for me. See you guys later. Bye.